Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome back to episode three of the Covenant Podcast. We have some exciting guests today from the Hesed House. We had Stacy on last week um, to talk about volunteering a little bit. And uh, today we have John, um, and he is the, what's your status or your title? Executive what director. Was it? Yeah. Official executive, executive director. Executive yes. director. <laughs> and so we're excited to dive in and uh, just talk about the Hesed House and just kind of highlight their ministry a little bit and uh, some of the stuff that they're doing. But first, um, we have a little bit of housekeeping yeah. that my man Mike took care of last week. Um, I'm glad he's back. <laughs> <laughs> um, like always, um, our email is covenantchurchnc1 at gmail. So if you guys have any suggestions, suggestions, sorry, on what you guys want us to talk about, just go ahead and send something there um, and we will see if we can talk about it. So, Mike, give me a rundown of what we're doing today. Well, we brought John in, the executive director, and Miss Stacy, who volunteers from our church a, a, a great amount uh, over at the Hesed House. To get them to tell us a little bit, our our goal is um, this year is to really highlight some opportunities to volunteer in our community. And the Hesed House is really, really dear to our heart. Uh, we've watched that thing from its birth, and and we've always had people from our church involved. And uh, like Stacy reminded us last week, you know, when you get invol- involved in volunteering, uh, it affects you more than mm-hmm. it does the people you think you're going to help. And, and I, I imagine their testimony is much like that. So. Ultimately, our goal is to inform the community about opportunities that we can get involved in locally that are missions that really, really, really can affect people's lives and affect our lives as well. Mm-hmm. And and so that's that's why we got these two guys in here today. And we're excited to hear from them. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, just first to start out, um, since you guys are there all the time. And Stacey, you're the volunteer coordinator, right? So you're like on the board and everything like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And so I guess the first thing we want to ask, super simple, um, just tell the viewers and listeners kind of what the Hesed House is. Go for it. John. All right. (laughs) Very good. Uh, So uh, first thing I tell most people uh, about Hesed is the, the meaning of the word Hesed. You know, we, we hear it pronounced all different I'm sure you uh, pronunciations and <laughs> he say, hey say, but uh, the founders of Hesed House, which was a community group organizers of, you know, individuals in the community, some local pastors and uh, lay people of the church just got together and, and said, let's form uh, uh, the Hesed House that they seen the need uh, of a homeless shelter and the homeless needs. So the word Hesed means love and kindness. So I, I have great, great respect and admiration for those folks who created the Hesed House because they, they nailed it mm-hmm. you know, right on spot because the word Hesed, uh, a lot of individuals see homeless people you know, sitting out on the street with a sign up, yeah. you know, 90% of them will just keep on going. But it takes that love and kindness of a church uh, community uh, to really make a difference. So uh, that's what Hesed House is is that yeah. love and that kindness of a community. Yeah. And how many, I mean, so you guys serve homeless people in our community. Um, and so how many people do you guys think are homeless in Lincoln County, if you just had to guess? Uh, that's a good question because uh, last week we did the annual point in time count. Mm-hmm. Uh, point in time count is the national uh, snapshot of homelessness in, the, in each community across the United States. Uh, last Tuesday we went out. Uh, about 20 volunteers uh, from the local community went out and we scanned under the bridges, tent communities, mm-hmm. uh, people living in the cars. Uh, so we counted roughly about 30 people that's pretty much in the downtown Lincoln area. Yeah. Uh, we found uh, a new lady that we de- didn't even know about living in a car at Walmart. Uh, we see the tents, especially at this time of the year. We, you can very easily see those tents yeah. in the open. Uh, but what we're missing is those that's living in vehicles, abandoned buildings, uh, and just other places not meant for habitation. Mm-hmm. So uh, our current count uh, is around 30 to 40 individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that there's many, many more people that we don't even see Yeah, uh, that's – Couch surfing, mm-hmm. uh, living from couch to couch, uh, especially with COVID, unemployment, affordable housing. Uh, in a community like Lincoln, I, would, I wouldn't uh, be scared to say probably near a hundred, no, mm-hmm. in the hundreds probably, yeah. that's, that's homeless. Mm-hmm. 
But we often don't think about, you know, our little tiny town, how many people are actually living in mm -hmm. tents around yeah. here, living in their cars. It's kind of shocking when you actually walk out there for yourself and see it. Um, and that's part of the homeless shelter. We not only take responsibility for those living inside of our shelter, we take responsibility for those outside of our shelter, too, with doing outreach, going out, checking on, make sure they have food and water, uh, whatever they need, because we're working to show that love and kindness in hopes that if we can share that love and kindness, we can get them into the shelter and help them get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely a reality check to think, just to walk downtown, you're probably very close to 30 to 40 people yeah. who are living outside every day, every single round. day. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know I was involved a, a little bit in the beginning stages. Um, remember when we started out, we would, we had a couple of churches that would let them stay. I mean, they stayed mm -hmm. every one or two nights a week in our gym. Right. And uh, that's how our first connection with the homeless uh, people started. I had just come out from teaching school. And I started looking at numbers, and you find out that a lot of times people won't tell you they're homeless mm -hmm. because they're terrified if they do, you'll take their kids from them. So they, mm -hmm. they try to dodge <laughs> you counting them. Right. And there's just so many other uh, intricate factors in identifying that group of people. And then there's some who you know they're homeless, but they won't come stay with you. And you mm -hmm. got a safe, warm place for them to eat, bathe, take care of themselves. All, all kind of different things we ran into, just challenges mm -hmm. when I was uh, involved in in the beginning. And uh, but I just, man, we just so admire what y'all do, mm -hmm. you know, because we know you're making a, a difference in in the lives of people every single day, 365 days a year, and it it, it blesses my heart to see that that love and kindness that you guys are showing them. You know, uh, thinking about last week, we talked about you know people need people mm -hmm. and. A lot of times you end up homeless or end up outside because you are alone. Or if you stay outside, you don't want to come inside the shelter with us. It's because you only have one person out there and you're not leaving that one no mm -hmm. matter what. And I think that's something that I was kind of judgmental about when I first started. Like you would rather sleep outside. But then I realized you only have one person in eight billion. And so you're not leaving your one. And so there are a lot of factors of how. Um, someone could end up outside. Ultimately, we just want to show that love. We're not here to judge. You know, we're not really asking you questions. We're just saying, hey, how can we show you love today? How can we show you hope ultimately in Jesus? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, even just to go back to even some of like the first season or some of the, some of the stuff that we've said back then, um, it just always reminded me whenever you said, uh, Islands are dangerous. Yeah, they are. Mm. Yeah, they islands are dangerous. Yep. And um, that's something that I've always kept in mind after that. I mean, when you think about it, anything that we do is hi not, not heightened, but it's better with another person. You know what I'm saying? Like serving with another person. Well, I think God created us to be, to be community <clears throat> yeah, for sure. oriented and to have other people to encourage us. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine being that person that's lost your job. I think that I don't know the national average. I worked in a homeless shelter one time for about a week and a half. And Savannah, Georgia, which is like one of the like mm -hmm. like hubs for homelessness right. in America. I think I heard that they had maybe when we were down there more homeless people than than any other city, which was strange because Savannah, but they had actually converted an entire days in into a homeless shelter, mm -hmm. and uh, and I discovered all kind of information like uh, uh, X percentage, John, you may know this number of people in America are like one or two weeks away from homelessness like just one or two checks mm -hmm. because most people in America don't have a bank account with $10,000 in it in case something goes wrong. Uh, most people in America, if they lose their job today, within two weeks, they could be homeless. I mean, or at mm -hmm. least there's a percentage that, that yeah. maybe you know more about that than I do. Obviously yeah. you know more yeah, about that's, them. <laughs> that's Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's probably true. Uh, especially with this eviction moratorium that we're under, you know, we're, we're just probably days or weeks away from, you know, many people losing the house because the landlords have been under this moratorium uh, and people are struggling. What does that uh, mean a little bit? Like, is yeah. that coming from COVID? Is yes. That, yeah. Yes. Correct. So, and so one they of the haven't things, been kicked out. Is that what correct, you're saying? Yeah. They haven't been kicked uh, out yeah. on the verge of there, or lack the of verge. payment. Right. Like you said, wow. one or two weeks away, uh, I, I foresee, you know, a big surge of homelessness mm -hmm. coming in the coming months. Uh, when they lift that, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the other things I'm surprised at is individuals that I've seen over the past, you know, eight nine years working at Hested is uh, 
individuals who work all their lives and mm -hmm. they get 50, 55, you know, most of our ages, except for Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> she's a young one. <laughs> and and Ryan, but, well, Ryan's uh, younger than I yeah. am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, individuals work their whole life and, and get, you know, 50, 55 and just become physically unable to work and yeah. they have no family. You know, if you take someone who's a single child and, you know, maybe their parents pass away, they don't, they don't have nobody mm -hmm. right? and they become physically unable to work. You know, of course, disability claims takes months, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, and landlords and uh, renters don't, don't, don't wait, wait months. So, yeah, uh, we see, we see, we, we you know, Stacy remembers this. We had a lady that was, you know, was in her 60s. She was a, a manager at one of the fast food restaurants, became physically disabled because of her eyesight, couldn't work, and she became homeless. So uh, yeah, we've seen that yeah. with one of our more fun, more known resident. His name's Neil. Uh, if you go to our website, you see the video of Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to share that website today, too. Yeah. yeah. Neil's yeah. a great story uh, of that prime example that, you know, uh, people yeah. become homeless because, you know, yeah. uh, it's not it happen all, to anybody. Honestly, yeah, exactly. that's, the, that's the key. The, yeah. uh, one of the guys I remember very, very clearly becoming friends with, his name was John <laughs> in, uh, in Savannah, was a guy that had been an executive with IBM at mm -hmm. some point in his life. Went through a divorce, l lost his way, uh, got into some alcohol addiction, and is in a homeless shelter in Savannah, Georgia. Had been, had been for six months when I met him. And I thought, this guy's college educated. At one point in his life, was making six figures. Goes through a hard place in his life and has nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And he ends up sleeping in a car mm -hmm. until he lost it. Right. And so we see that. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to associate homelessness with just addiction. You think, yeah. You, know, you must, mm -hmm. you know, you must be holding a sign on a street corner or living in a shelter because you have an addiction. But it is so much more than that. There are so mm -hmm. many reasons, you know, divorce. We see that. We see on um, domestic violence. We see, you know, we do see addiction. Um, people do struggle with all types of addiction. Uh, we do um, drug tests at our shelter. We do, do that every, every day. We drug test when you first come yeah, in sure. right? and I we do breathalyze every day. So we mm -hmm. work to hold everyone to, you know, a level of accountability to be clean. But, but it, again, you know, we want to change that stereotype of how yeah, people right. see homelessness. We have served many people, like you said, with college degrees, very educated people. Um, they come in, you wouldn't think, Oh, you're living in a homeless shelter, but, they are because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the circumstances that they've dealt and choices that they've made, you know, have led them there. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we want, we want, like I said, to change that face of homelessness. Yeah. We don't want everybody just to associate mm -hmm. homeless to addiction. And I, and I think that's important too. Maybe one of the most important things we'll do with this today is to change the face of it because so many people look from the outside and see a homeless person. And I remember running into a little bit, of like friction when we were starting the fundraising for building a homeless shelter, there are actually people in Lincoln that did not want one built here because mm -hmm. they automatically assume that if you build one, they'll More come. More homeless people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, they still believe that. Yeah, they, yeah. Do. they, they still, still believe still that. Get, we still deal with that. Still, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, which is sad in some degree because I, I'm of the opinion, and I and I, a, lot, a lot of the pastors that were on that board because I knew them were of the opinion, so what? If we build it and then we fill our homeless shelter up, they're homeless somewhere, mm -hmm. or they wouldn't be in a shelter. It's not like, uh, you know, why, why, why fall into that fear of them showing up here? We would rather them be here. It's mm -hmm. kind of like church. I tell our church people all the time: if you got people that are messed up, bring them to us. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if y'all are the same way, I, I've seen that yeah. with y'all's ministry. Mm -hmm. If they're messed up, bring them to us. We want them to stay here if they don't have a home. Mm -hmm. And uh, y'all, y'all create accountability and also programs. I know I remember where you. This might lead us into one of our other questions. Y'all try to get them, help them break the cycle. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. how, tell us some stuff y'all do on that on that end. Uh, so, yeah. So several years ago, uh, we partnered with a organization called Jobs for Life. Mm -hmm. Jobs for Life is a, a national organization that's in 300 cities across the nation and and in six different countries. Uh, so Jobs for Life teaches the dignity and value of work based on the story of Joseph in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we all know the story of Joseph. Uh, so we we ran a 16 week curriculum uh, study based on work and the value of work 
know, God's created us all to work, mm-hmm. and there's dignity and value. Uh, so uh, during those 16 weeks, uh, we probably averaged about 20 to 22 participants each week, and it was open not only for the Hesed House residents, but for anybody in the community. Some of our 10 individuals were coming into class. Uh, so during those 16 weeks, they they learned job skills. Mm-hmm. They learned interview skills. They learned you know, conflict resolution on the job. Mm-hmm. You know, our residents can easily go out here and get a job, but they cannot. The problem is they can't maintain a job over mm-hmm. the course of a long distance because they get mad at supervisor and then they just run out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, they may have to start out as a dishwasher, but we teach them, you know, you, you train and, and build dignity and, and build mm-hmm. that character that you're going to do a good job at this and you're going to move up to assistant cook then the yeah. cook then the manager right. so uh, we teach them that uh, so during those 16 weeks we graduated eight individuals uh, that was able to graduate and uh, we said we're going to do it the right way we're going to go all out if you graduate we're going to do a cap and gown ceremony mm-hmm. uh, one of the local churches uh, new vision allowed us to use our church and, and we did a graduation ceremony where uh, those eight individuals had cap and gown walked Across the stage, yes. and we gave them a little good, certificate, yeah. <laughs> and you've, you've seen the pride and the, yeah. the happiness on their faces. Uh, that made it all well, worth it. Well, isn't that what they lost most? Mm-hmm. You know, when they became homeless, because those stereotypes, you know, your dignity, your value, your yeah. identity, your worth, and mm-hmm. to help restore that, I think that's it's one of the things I remember you guys doing, like bringing people in that cut their hair, mm-hmm. and you know, it's different things. Like those are little things we don't think of in, in our, on a on a day-to-day basis, but somebody that's homeless, I mean, if they don't have money to have anywhere to sleep or eat, they, they don't get their hair combed. Right. You know? mm-hmm. They don't have anywhere to bathe sometimes, you know, different things yeah. like that that y'all just restore, which is, I think is incredible. Yeah. And speaking of those classes, I know you guys just went through a big expansion. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, f- I forget how many people you could house there before, but tell me how many people can you guys serve now? Uh, so prior to our expansion, we was able to, to serve 24 individuals mm-hmm. and that was, uh, 10 females and 14 men uh, and is in one open dorm setting with bunk beds. Uh, so when a family come in, you could have a family of you know, three or four. And typically if it's a you know, child, uh, a son and a mother, mm-hmm. they would be separated on the yeah. different sides of the room. So we've seen really a, a dignity of you know what that uh, affected the families coming into a homeless shelter. Mm-hmm. So our main goal was to create an expansion create two family rooms to where a family could be a family together and stay together and, uh, and have a separate, you know, shower facility and a laundry that they could access you mm-hmm. know, just private to that family. Uh, so now we've increased our bed capacity to eight more beds yeah. and that's specifically for families. Uh, so our total capacity is 32 individuals. Wow. And you guys feed them too, right? Mm-hmm. We do. We, we feed an evening meal. We partner with our local community. Yeah. A lot of churches come in. Uh, businesses like Atrium Health comes in once a month and does the meal. Uh, what blesses me when a school group like Union yeah. Elementary comes in, their third and fourth graders you know, sit That's behind cool. you know, the tables, mm-hmm. and, and they're actually the ones serving. And, and one of the biggest, coolest things that blesses me at the shelter is you know, where they serve the food at is right in front of the cross. And my, you know, vision is to, that's where God that's real. really serves. Yeah. That's where you, at the foot of the cross is where you're going to see service and grace. And, yeah. you know, uh, when the, when the residents gather up, we say a few announcements, but you know, they, they're facing the cross and mm-hmm. they facing those who are serving them. And, and most important is they're facing the cross. Well, yeah. And I, w- I wanted to say, if you didn't mind thinking about that, breaking the cycle thing, mm-hmm. one of the things that we talk a lot about is, we want to give our residents a hand up, not a handout. Right. So our goal mm, like always that. is that you leave better than when you came in. And yeah. maybe it's because of the Jobs for Life program or maybe a different way. We, When we added the expansion, we were able to build a big lobby mm. and that doubles as our classroom. Mm. And so um, we're really excited because we're getting four new computers and printers. So we're actually going to have... Our lobby will be a workroom for our residents as well. Um, But with the lobby, we host Atrium Health and BB&T and individuals who come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays and just teach classes, you know, how to manage money. Uh, I think they've done things like 
cancer screenings. Mm-hmm. And at one point, all of our residents were CPR PCR. certified. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you never that's know. You stuff, might be that. That, that, um, that builds dignity. Yeah. It does. And do DSS um, has been incredible. They come in and they partner with us a couple of days a week. Ben Berkowitz comes in and they work on just applying for jobs, applying for so security cards. What does what, Ben do? He helps them with those things. Yeah. Man's one of my former yeah. youth group. Yeah, he kids. is. He's really out. great too. We'll yeah. brag on him. We love him. He's um, an employment specialist. Yeah, he's he's one focuses on employment and yeah. he is resumes. He's an awesome know. little dude, man. I've loved that guy. Yeah, my whole so life. he's great. Yeah, yeah. And so he um he's coming in and he's helping them. So anything they need as far as employment, um, they can get help with, or even if it's disability, whatever it may be. And so our goal ultimately, like I said, is that you leave better than when you came in in some way. We don't want to just be a place where you come in, you eat, you shower, you sleep. Mm -hmm. We want to teach you about Jesus. First of all, we spread, you know, that hope. And second of all, help you find dignity and help you find um, whatever it is you need and what you're looking for while you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the comparison of the old lobby versus our new lobby. In our old lobby, we could only sit, seat uh, eight people. Yep. Uh, so as, as residents coming in, you know, at that time we had 24 beds. So you had eight people, you know, with seats. The other, you know, 15 was you know, sitting in the floor. So mm-hmm. our new lobby can seat 32 people now. Yeah. So and that, again, out. serves as a classroom. Also, nights like tonight, it's going to be uh, in the 20s. We yeah. open that lobby up mm-hmm. and put fold-out cots. We, we don't want nobody. Uh, have to sleep in a tent with 20 yeah. degree weather. So that's cool. we give them the option to, to come in. Uh, we're going to love on you. We're going to you know, uh, give you supper. Uh, then if, if we can start showing that love and grace, maybe they'll come into the shelter. They eat mm-hmm. breakfast there too the next morning. Yeah. Yes. I thought they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our wow. staff eat them. Yeah. Luckily we have some really great cooks on our tell staff. Me, <laughs> tell me about the staff. I mean, like how'd you get involved? Number one with Hesed House. Yeah. Uh, so just a little backstory. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Shelby, went to high school and at Crest High School. But as a senior, I volunteered at the local homeless shelter. So as I speak to churches, I tell them, you know, that's a note to all the young people. God's got a purpose and a plan for all of our lives. Right. You know, even at a young age, you know, mm-hmm. he's planted the seeds for me to, to serve in a homeless shelter. I never thought I would be executive director over, you know, homeless shelter. You know, in another county, so. Oh, but uh, God knew that. But yeah, <laughs> eight, yeah. But I started serving at Christian Ministry, of course, in the community. Uh, a lot of people know me from 18 years at Christian Ministry, uh, and just by coincidence, I saw uh, a job posting at Hesed House in 2012. Uh, of course, they tried to do the volunteer, you know, bases and run the shelter right. with all volunteers, and that and was seen, rough. Yeah, seeing it was that. rough and structure-wise, <laughs> uh, so. I became a part-time staff person in 2012. Uh, several years ago, uh, they asked me to take the director's job. Prayed about it and, and seen that you know, there was, you know, a vision there that you know we could get the community behind. And, and we I, begged a lot too. <laughs> yeah. We we knew yeah. we needed John. Yeah. 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 So I, you're the only. Are you the only person that works there, like paid position wise, or no? Uh, you know, the board of directors is a great group of individuals who's, right. who's really, you know, took step of faith and on every decision they've, they've took. Uh, of course, we started out as a winter night shelter mm. in 2008, roving shelter from church to church. We built our current facility uh, in 2010, opening it in 2011. Uh, each year, the board decided, hey, let's expand the winter season another month. Let's add another staff person. So, They've you know, prayed about and they've you know done it strategically uh, over the course of the six or seven years. So currently we have myself as a full-time employee mm-hmm. and we have uh, five other part-time employees. Mm-hmm. We have an individual who comes in at night at 11 p.m. and they stay awake, make sure the building is secure, mm-hmm. phone calls. You know, a lot of times the police officer will come knock on our door and say, we see we, we've got this person male, female, who's we just seen on the street, can you let them come in and sleep in the lobby? Mm-hmm. So we do a lot of that. So uh, we have a weekend staff, but we have myself and five other yeah. part-time cool. staff. Stacy, how'd you, how'd you get involved in that? Um, I actually served a meal with Kathy Smith, who's another one of the board members. And I just thought, wow, this is really cool. 
you know, I'd never done anything like this local in our community. And so I just kept coming back. I mean, it was across the street and John was working there at the time. And I know I will never forget your face one day because I brought in like this big bag of clothes and he was like, what are you doing? Because I had just made myself at home. Like, yeah. I don't know what happened. She I does just, that. I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, he knows that now. She's too. one of my former youth kids too. Yeah. I, um, I just kept going back. Like it became all um, like, I don't want to say an obsession, but really in a way I, I wanted to be there and be a part of, you know, all the incredible things that were going on and just by God's grace and by God's goodness, uh, the more involved I got and I met people, I found out that the volunteer coordinator position was going to be coming open. And I was like, Oh, I can talk to people like that's something I can do. And so uh, I just kept talking and talking and eventually <laughs> they were like, just let her have let it. Her have so she'll stop talking. <laughs> um, and so uh, I've been on the board for um, about three years now as the yeah. volunteer coordinator. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So what can others do? So if the viewers or listeners, what can they do to get involved? To yeah, how can their volunteer? church get involved or how can they get involved individually? Yeah. Well, um, the first thing we'd have you do is go to hesedhouseofhope.com, go to the volunteers tab, scroll to the bottom. There's a button that says tours and you can sign up for a tour. I do tours every single Sunday night at 430. Um, and that way we can tell you all about the shelter. You can see it for yourself and we'll talk about all the ways you can volunteer. Um, our main ways to volunteer right now are serving a meal. Mm -hmm. And that's a really fun way. You would be amazed. I'm amazed every day still that 365 nights a year, someone in our community shows up to bring food. Yep. We do not pay for the food at the shelter. That is, you know, Union Elementary, Atrium. That's, you know, Covenant Church brings a meal. New Vision brings a meal. Real Life Church. Uh, there are Boy Scout groups that come in. There are individual families. And so we have a calendar where you can sign up to bring a meal. Uh, we have a, um, ways you can volunteer through activities. So something, you know, Friday, Saturday night. We work all week. We're used to going out to eat or whatever. If you live in the shelter, you have to be in the shelter by 630. That's part of our rules and regulations. And so they are not going to the movies. Well, none of us are right now, I guess. But, <laughs> but in a, in a non-COVID world, world. Um, you know, they're not going bowling, you know. Um, and so we have volunteers come in and do activities like games, cornhole, basketball tournaments, bingo, mm. whatever it is. Um, whatever, you know, last week we talked about how God gives grace gifts, whatever it is that your gifting is, you can come in and share it. If you like to sing, we have a piano, we have a guitar. Well, we have a keyboard, we have a guitar. Um, if you like to bake, you can come in and do baking. If you're a crafter and you want to come in and teach someone how to sew, all of those um, opportunities are available. You also can get involved with some of our major projects we have. The um, Trail of Hope is one of the things mm -hmm. that we're working on, this connecting our shelter to town. Uh, and along the way, um, we want there to be opportunities for people to stop and read stories about uh, or stories from scripture or about addiction or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're just setting up different areas, like reading areas, I guess mm -hmm. is how we would say it, right? Yeah. Um, we have prayer garden. We're also working on a dog kennel right now. And yeah. then John is a, a visionary. That's why he's our leader. And he always has lots of cool projects. So if you're a big church group and you're thinking like, we really like to cut down trees, then, <laughs> you know, call us because we'll have, we'll That's find good. some trees, you know, for you to cut down. <laughs> Um, you can also bring breakfast, drop it off early in the morning. And then of course we uh, are a nonprofit. So all of our, um, donations are made local. So we mm -hmm. have a way to, um, partner bed sponsors. So if that's something that you're, um, interested in doing, we have COVID friendly activities. Uh, you know, if your family is comfortable coming in the shelter, they're welcome to, but if they prefer to do something outside, you know, there are ways that you can help outside or through fundraisers, uh, donations. We always need things like trash bags or whatever. And so mm -hmm. you always um, need money. Yeah. 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 Money. I mean, it's yeah, true. obviously, yes. but, um, all you have to do is go to hessethouseofhope.com. Yeah. Uh, there's a donation button. <laughs> there is. But you guys can support them <laughs> and support our community. Uh, and I will say, uh, I am on the board of directors, but I, um, I'm, I'm being led by an incredible group of people in our community who make very wise decisions financially. Uh, I have been absolutely blown away at, at how they make decisions. And also um, I'm proud of the way they make financial decisions. And I think that anybody who donates would 
you know, be mm-hmm. proud of that as that's, well. That's 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 important. Mm-hmm. Really I think is. so too. And and a cool thing about the Hesed House is when you donate, whether it's your time, your money, your stuff, whatever it is, you see an effect right there in yeah. your community. It's affecting someone mm-hmm. yeah. who otherwise may be standing on a street corner begging for food. Mm-hmm. So we're coming down to the last question, and this is more of a fun one. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot, um, <laughs> but we want to know like a story from both of you, from each of you, um, just like one of the really awesome success stories or funny story or okay. something. Uh, sure. So, uh, yeah, I want to throw a pitch about our playground too. We, we named oh, yeah. the playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Landon's playground. Landon was, of course, an amazing young young guy who mm-hmm. made a huge impact in this community and left a legacy. Uh, so we were blessed to yeah. allow to have the family uh, uh, have us name the playground after him. So it's Landon's playground, and uh, we can speak for I can speak for hours about mm-hmm. Hesed House, but you, yeah, you really do. got to come <laughs> in and <laughs> knock on the door and take those tours, or just show up and and really see, you know what God's done in the past, you know, That's three years and or yeah. you know, uh since the the board of directors took that step of faith and said, let's open it year round. Mm-hmm. You know, we were closing the shelter uh during the summer and homeless people were either having to, you know, go scatter or, you know, live in the woods for a hot summer day. So uh since the board had made that decision, the community of Lincoln, wow, it's just just really got behind Hesed House and you know, from the playground to the Hope Rising Memorial Garden and the prayer garden, we have a vegetable garden that we started several years ago where the residents actually, mm-hmm. you know, raise a garden, vegetable garden in the springtime. Uh, we're looking at doing a, an emotional support animal with the dog kennel. So uh, there's always things and ways to get involved. But one of the coolest stories that I remember is, you know, probably my first year full time, we had an 18 year old kid. Uh, still a local student in one of our high schools. Uh, he lived in a in a pretty bad situation at home, and you know when he before he turned eighteen, he would run away from home many times. And each time, of course, you know he would get, be brought back, you know, either by the, the police or DSS, and he had no other option. But when he turned eighteen, he says, "I'm going to run away," and they can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. So he came uh, to us at Hesed House, and he graduated, you know his senior year uh, while in school as a resident. At Completely House. alone. Nobody. Yeah, else. nobody. No no other family. Uh, so investigating why he stayed with us and of those last three or four months, you know, found his mother, uh, found out, you know, the divorce happened when he was probably four or five years old. Mm-hmm. His dad kept him as a son and his mother had a, you know, they had a daughter. So his sister and the mother moved to England uh, where she was originally from. from. Uh, so we contacted her and said, Hey, you know, he's here. We're taking good care of him. Uh, she said, well, I'd love to have him come visit. And so as a graduation present, we raised the community, raised enough money to, to fly him over on a six month visa. Wow. Uh, before he left, he, uh, got signed up to, to join a job corps. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he had all that set yeah. as, when he come back. So he, he spent six months over in England, mm-hmm. uh, just from the love and kindness of, of this community yeah. wanting to make a difference. And you know, he sent a picture back shortly after he got over there and with him and his sister, he hadn't seen his sister since he was, you know, I think he was, she was like two years younger than him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he hadn't seen her and she hadn't seen him since yeah. they were you know, five, six wow. you know, years old. So That's he awesome. came back and spent probably another month mm-hmm. after he returned, uh, after the six month visa was up, mm-hmm. then he, he left. Uh, he's he's doing great. He's doing very good. He's still in Job Corps. Got ex- his some time extended to be a part of that program a little bit longer. So that's one of the coolest stories that that I remember. That's great. Um, there are so many stories, and there have been so many laughs, you know, at the shelter. But I, of course, think about something more serious than funny uh, when I think about the shelter. And Neil is one that always sticks out to me um, because. When we met him, and he'll tell you this story publicly, you know, and he has really in our video, but um, when we met him, he held his head down, his shoulders down, and he wore a really big coat. 
uh, a really heavy coat, even in the summer. Like, you know, we're like, well, it's hot in here. Why are you wearing this coat? But he wouldn't look at you, would hardly speak to you, only if he absolutely had to. And uh, over time, he just, he started coming into the shelter. We talked to him. We loved on him. Every opportunity that all of us had. I remember uh, Sarah Upton, who's a member of our church. She hosted a gingerbread night and he um, participated and we had to beg him like this was a pull of teeth, but he participated. He built this epic gingerbread house. It was just unbelievable. Like he was an engineer, you know, um, and he won a, a massage that night, actually, which was pretty cool. He was super excited about that. But slowly we watched him come to life. And eventually he took his coat off. You wouldn't see him wearing his coat anymore. Then he held his head up and he tells us, you know, I felt so unworthy to even speak because I couldn't take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, But what we got to watch literally was hope rising. You will hear us say hope rising at the shelter a lot. That was our vision, the name of our expansion. And uh, we got to see hope rise literally yeah. in him from his wow. shoulders to his head. And that yeah. was all Jesus, you yeah. know, the, and uh, Neil has been back. He dropped off gift cards to John over Christmas last year yeah. um, to give gifts to our residents. Wow. And then this past year, he donated money to purchase a picture of Jesus to hang inside of our expansion. So he's on a fixed income, but he is still giving back what has been given mm-hmm. to him. And so uh, that's just one person that sticks yeah. out in my mind as a visual of what we do yeah. Uh, yeah. every and, day. And, we'll, and just real quick uh, story about when Neil moved out and got housed, you know, mm-hmm. he stayed with us about six months. And why he stayed with us, he, one of the things he got accomplished was his driver's license. He had to pay fees and get his license re- reinstated. But uh, shortly after he moved out, we took him up to one of the car lots and he bought a car, just one of the used cars that was like, you no. Know, one price and he paid for it. And so as was, I was with him as was test driving, uh, he looked at me like, this is the first time I've, I've drove a car in about three years. So <laughs> I was like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I said, this is, yeah, now you tell me. Yeah. So, you know, he hadn't, he hadn't really <clears throat> drove in, you know, in more than three years because, yeah. you know, he lost his license and became mm-hmm. disabled. So mm-hmm. other things happened, but yeah, that's one of my funny stories about Neil, you know, <laughs> driving a car for the first time in yeah. three years. And you were with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I loved meeting him whenever we were, we yeah. were filming that video. That was yeah. awesome. Mike, you got anything last to Man, say? Man, just thank you guys. Man, I, I, when you, you know, the, the Bible talks about hope, you know, Ephesians mm-hmm. 6 said hope is an anchor to our soul. Mm-hmm. And once you give people hope and they find that they have a purpose in Christ and they find the identity and dignity and all those other things that you guys were pouring into them is amazing. But what I maybe have enjoyed just as much as that is is to watch your li- eyes light up when you're talking mm-hmm. about it, you know, yeah. like, we asked Stacy to talk about volunteering a while ago, and she she's ready to give you the whole. You know, like, <laughs> she needs you know, a spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. yeah do it. But, oh, I have one. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but that passion that I've watched, because I've known Stacy since she was you know fourteen years old, and to see her find a, a, a reason, and you mm-hmm. know besides just teaching school, which is an amazing gift that she has, but to watch her find her place there has been amazing. So just to watch your eyes light up, mm-hmm. both mm-hmm. of you, is is a blessing. And your passion for, for those people is just uh, just touches yeah. something in me. So I, I pr- thank y'all. Yeah, I think thank it's you because so much. it touches something thank in you. us. You know, yeah. that for passion sure. is because yeah, you know yeah. it it changes their lives, but it changes ours too. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? that's true, you know, and, and it's obvious. So yeah. thank y'all. <laughs> yeah. My heart. I just want to say thank you both for coming today. Yeah, for thank sure. You. Thank you guys. Well, we loved being here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you guys have cool. seen, um, you guys out there, what this organization does for the community and everything. So one last time, we'll give you guys the shout out. If you guys want um, to donate or if you want to get information about volunteering or contact them, you can go to the Hesed house of hope.com. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. One last time. Lastly, (laughs) we'll see you guys later. See y'all. Bye. Thanks.